good morning all of you yeah thank you thank you very much for the wonderful opportunity to talk about the bamboo and uh, it's my dream to make uh, bamboo as you know one of the commercially viable crop for all sorts of people farmers industries and uh, to reduce the global warming of the world world and that the bamboo should find its right place in the past i've been talking to you all about uh, you know its uh, capacity to grow better and then you know produce electricity to produce uh, um, cng or through other material today i thought we will focus only on to how do we look at this ethanol you know ethanol is uh, been used consumed as consumption consuming material as well as for a industrial application for the solvent and also for the fuel what is gaining uh, in the nowadays is is the volume of record for making into into huge quantity of fuel so uh, my focus is more on to the how do we make the fuel grade ethanol and uh, let me get into my presentation and before that i just want to tell you that uh, i was fortunate to get an assignment from inbar for the last uh, one year i've been working on on the bamboo to ethanol as well as bamboo to cn syn gas so we are collecting all these information what is available uh, for, uh, throughout the world and compiling it with a focus to introduce this concept in africa so africa is you know blessed with a good amount of weather good quantity of soil and uh, also enough number of people to work on and uh, so the inbar has assigned me this job and i have been working as a consultant for them to develop the project from that has given me little more information on the bamboo how do we do that let me go on to my presentation i hope you are all able to see the bamboo screen we can see sir please right. go thank you thank, thank you. you thank you for confirmation rangnath ji you know 2g ethanol ethanol several generations of ethanol are there first generation second generation third generation now we are people are working even on fourth generation ethanol so we are i'm going to restrict myself to 2g ethanol and then the bamboo has got a lot of lignocellulosic material and in the lignocellulosic material we will be using the cellulose which is a hollow and hemi cellulose for making the bamboo into ethanol and uh, for this what species are possible what how we can do that and what are the things possible we will be doing it i am uh, very very much indebted to bamboo society of india to see that you know this kind of information is disseminated to all the people today it may not be very relevant i would say this way it's not very popular but this is the future this is the future and uh, bamboo by itself is a future but among the bamboo, among this the ethanol is one of the major major area which is going to be contributing a large requirement it's not visible to all of us at the moment so i am too early to talk to you in this technology but people like nitin gadkare you know just 5 days back our minister honorable minister for highways he has been speaking about this and then say government is promoting ethanol production in a very big way in india yes they have been giving lot of uh, you know supports to the farmers supports to the industry who is coming up and bamboo as a fuel is is one of the thing which is coming up you know in the last 20 years slowly it's it's they they were blending it so when when you look at indian blending it's hardly 3% till last year country like brazil they have gone up to 85% blending even there are they have 100% ethanol vehicles are there, available there even now it's running in india in nagpur there are 100% ethanol buses are running scania buses are running called green buses it's also also there but there the consumption is quite high but india with a lot of pressure and push from the government it's now gone to 5% level i'm very happy from 3 to 5% level but then the government has said now 
that it should become 20% by 2025. You know, we struggle, struggle a lot to come to 5%. From 5 to 20, it's three times more, 300% more. And the potential is very, very high. And how do we do that? Can we do that? So bamboo is going to be a highly supporting system of crop to make this happen. Very true. At the end of the conference, you'll understand. Let me go through the evolution, how the bamboo ethanol started coming up in India. In 2003, we started talking about blending of ethanol. We started with a very low level, with a mandate of making it as 5% in 2007. Then we could uh, start doing only 1% blending in 2014. If you take the total average of blending has taken place, it's only 2014. By 2014, we could reach only 1%. The country has achieved today 5% blending. Now, in the next couple of years, we are supposed to reach E20 fuel, which means 20% of our fuel has to be there. We are getting today majority of ethanol from the sugar cane. One acre of sugar cane field is able to give 40 tons of sugar cane. When you crush them, you are able to get the sugar of something like 10%, which is four tons of sugar. Then unreduced sugar called molasses, which remains as a waste normally in the industry, which has been used for several other applications, including ethanol generation, which is only one and a half tons from the one acre of cane. Understand? Only one and a half tons. This one and a half tons, they ferment it. When you ferment that, you are getting 400 liter 350 liters, very, very efficiently when you do that, it becomes somewhere 420 liter per of this material, which is one acre, one year. Now, that is what this is able to give all these years to come up to the 5%, including some amount of uh, starch from the grains. We are also started doing now. Now, the jump from 5 to 20%, you cannot make it only through sugar cane. It needs to have another source. Then only the 20% uh, achieve, it's possible. Now, currently 5% ethanol is blended with the petrol and resulting in a procurement of 188 crore liter of ethanol. 188 crores. That's what we are consuming now from different sources throughout India. We are not allowing any import of uh, this oil, uh, ethanol at the moment. And to become 20%, we need 750 crores liter. A huge sum from jump from 188 to 750 crores. I made a small calculation. Can we do it? Is it possible? And if you want to do that, what you need to have is you need to have six six, uh, six lakhs sixty six thousand acres. Otherwise, 0. 0.6 million acres of bamboo is needed as energy plantation, not as a conventional plantation. Conventional plantation, the national yield is only around one ton per acre. It has to be cultivated properly. And then when you cultivate, then it has to be put into high density to make it 40 tons per acre, or at least 30 tons if you're making it per acre as a dry bamboo, you need 6 lakh, 6.6 .6 lakh acres. Well, if you don't want to do this, if you don't want to get into bamboo as energy, if you want to get the sort of our own, uh, the olden practice of doing the sugar cane, we need to have 25 lakh acres of sugar cane where it is complete juice will be used. No sugar will be produced. Only the juice, the uh, no molasses, completely the juice will be used. Even then, it's 25 lakh acres. Today, our total area of sugar cane is only 12 and a half acres. So we have to double it, triple it. Then only we can become uh, completely produced from this. To increase the sugar cane to this level is very difficult. I was talking to people in uh, North Karnataka. And uh, uh, they were mentioning about the sugar cane because of high cultivation, high intensity of cultivation, it's becoming sodic soil. So, you know, you have a lot of problems. I've been working in sugar cane for the last 30 years. And there is a limitation up to which we can go. Now, the limitation is the area cannot expand beyond such a not a 200%, 300% jump is not possible. Now, bamboo can give a hand for that. And... Let's look at how the bamboo can do it. Chairman was asking, what is this generations? 1G, 2G and all that. This first generation is making the ethanol from 
the edible material mostly from the sugar beet the sugar cane juice molasses or the starch from wheat corn potato rice all that could be coming into the first generation the second generation is from the non edible material it's not going to be interfering with our food chain it's not food versus fuel it is uh, uh, it is it is from the wood it could be from the straw it could be from the grass bamboo is the tallest grass or the waste material everything can be converted including our sewage waste could be also converted to ethanol right now the third generation involves algae it could be microalgae it could be macroalgae then the fourth generation which is totally genetic engineering which is uh, genetically engineered organisms or pyrolysis of the any any of this the first second third generation material could be gasified or pyrolysis and that gas can be given to the microorganism which are genetically uh, you know engineered to give the ethanol so we are going to look at second generation only at the moment the, the rest are all not at very popular and still a lot of research is going on looking at the raw material whether it is the first generation second generation the molasses which i told you is able to give you 1 ton is able to give you 250 to 275 liter of rectified spread per ton and which is in the heavy molasses it become 300 to 325 in a sugar cane juice complete sugar cane juice we are doing it let's not converting into sugar we are not converting into uh, our um, molasses then directly when you are doing entire juice then it becomes uh, 70 to 80 liters of um, sp uh, rectified spread per ton when it comes to cereals one ton can be converted to 300 liters maize rice all these could be converted to this but they are going to interfere with our food chain as I, as i told you earlier then comes the biomass from the bamboo biomass from the bamboo can be anywhere from 200 250 uh, liter per ton it could be even 300 liters per ton with the present day technology if the technology as it, as it goes is going to be perfect here it can go as much as i 480 liter per ton today the conversion technology of 2g in bamboo is not fully saturated fully mature but even then this is the status which is able to give you an average 250 liter or 25% 4 ton of bamboo can give you 1 ton of ethanol easily now bamboo has got lot of lignocellulosic material so it's a highly one of the best potential lignocellulosic material can grow fastest way and can produce bioethanol because it's got high level of cellulose and hemicellulose content in the material what i did i worked on this bamboo for for last 15 years i've been working on this for cultivation something like 7 years back i sent the material to uh, 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 italy before that i'll show you what how it has been done uh, administrator can you just remove all these arrows and uh, which i have not done it but it is there in the screen signa ji yes sir i think uh, the, i don't know who's doing that but then uh, it's uh, really obstructing the work yes, sir. can uh, so you are having the control you have to clear the annotations from your side okay but i have not done it but it is coming on as well because you are now presenting you okay one second let me okay. try uh anyhow i'm not i i i'll come to the later now the bamboo initially taken <clears throat> it is uh, processed pre processed pre treatment is done then enzymes are uh, treated to break down the cellulose chains into sugar the sugar then is converted by fermentation process into ethanol the process takes close to around close to around one week depending on the technology what they adapt it could be less it could be more but then an average is on one week time is a process time so it's a continuous process not a batch process so continuous process they will have you have to feed your keep on feeding biomass on one side and they will be keep on uh, you know purifying through distillation uh, uh, and then getting the ethanol on a summary basis 
the bamboo is like this, where the pre-processing is uh, done after the bamboo is harvested. Then its pre-treatment is done with a steam. So uh, there are several pre-treatment methods that I'll tell you later. Then it is reduced in size and allowed to ferment and saccharification takes place together. So enzymatic saccharification and fermentation takes place together. Then at the end of the uh, fermentation process, you, you distill the uh, material free from wastewater first. Then you take out the bioethanol and you also take out what is not digested, which is mostly lignin. And this material has highly high, got highest calorific value. Bamboo by itself has got a calorific value of 4,000 kilocalories per kilogram. Now, after we do the distillation, what comes is it's got around 6,000 to 6,500 kilocalories, depending on the age of the bamboo, depending on the uh, enzymatic digestion, depending on the loss taken place during the process. And this material potentially can be burned and converted into steam for producing electricity. It's a co-generation. The first, the, with the high pressure steam, the turbine is run. The turbine is able to run and it's able to produce alternator through the alternator electricity. And the steam is passed on to the pre-treatment -pre of this material. So the steam is not wasted. The heat is not wasted. The kinetic energy is not wasted. All this converted into energy. And this entire electricity, normally 20 megawatt electricity, is consumed within the factory for their own requirement. So the power is not taken as a cost. Power is produced by its own byproduct, raw material, right? Now, I sent this material to Italy, Beta Renewables. This is around uh, 2004, 2014. I sent the material to them. You know, because a lot of people were asking at that time itself whether bamboo can be producing ethanol. I was not too convinced about it at that time. But then, I, when I sent to them, they have checked up and said 64.8% is a fermentable sugar as against the sugar cane has got 12 to 14 or 15 percent sugar, out of which recoverable is only 10 percent. Now, this has got so much amount of uh, sugar. Now, this is for a bamboo which is one to one and a half years old. And today we have been working on different ages of bamboo and found out that less of the age you have more quantity of cellulose, which reaches 70, 75 percent of the bamboo is fermentable sugar. The lignin was 19.6. It varies anywhere from 19 to 25%. And in the younger bamboo, this is getting reduced because of which the fermentable sugar increases. When the fermentable sugar increases, ultimately we can touch 48% recovery against today's 25% recovery. However, this technology, what the Prusia technology is, what is uh, you know uh, completely um, patented by the by the Italian company, Beta Renewables, and they take the bi biomass. In the process technology, the enzymes are added, converted into C5 and C6 sugar, and fermented together now in the yeast. Then separation takes place, the lignin is taken out, and ethanol comes out. Now, they are offering the, any biomass. They have been doing originally with uh, Arunda Donex, is one of the wild relative of bamboo. And when I gave the bamboo, they were very, you know, fascinated to see, check up. And uh, uh, now it's only a question of anybody who wants to invest on this large scale, they'll be able to give the technology because they are running a commercial version of Arno Donex, which is growing in Europe. Arno Donex is, is, a, is a, it's like a bamboo. Some people even call this a bamboo, but it's not a bamboo, but it is, it's a wild uh, relative of that in the, in the evolution. And uh, then they also have a very specific technology. Everybody has got their own technology to make maximize the fermentable sugar and whereby they are able to do a unique uh, system of, uh, you know, saccharification along with the co-fermentation process, SSCF process, and which yields high ethanol concentration. Now, let's look at other uh, material. Is it bamboo is the only material available? No. You can use all these uh, trashes available from agricultural waste. It could be cotton uh, waste, or it could be forest thinning, or sawdust from the sawmill, wooden mill, or even the straw, what is available in the North India, which is getting burned, can be used. But they all have, you know, one ton of, one ton of bamboo, one ton of mass can give you theoretically only 215 liters of 
uh, ethanol for a dry ton. Uh, rice straw can give you 416. Bamboo can go up to 464 tons. Highest among the lot. This is for a matured bamboo. If the bamboo is little immature, in the sense, the more cellulose content, the theoretical yield still further jumps up higher. All these available uh, in, in the net. You can always check it up. And uh, when it comes to a crop like energy crop, is this bamboo's only energy crop available? Not at all. Switch grass is there. Um, miscanthus is there. It's all mostly in cold countries. And uh, guinea grass, popular tree, eucalyptus tree, which is grown, introduced everywhere, and they are able to survive. Today, Karnataka is avoiding eucalyptus because water table is getting reduced. And because the water consumption is very high, so bamboo becomes a better alternative against this energy crop of eucalyptus. Eucalyptus crop is going as deep as something like 15, 20, 25 feet down. The roots aren't able to take the water. Bamboo is able to take only up to two feet in the top. Plus, it is not reducing the water table. Bamboo is able to increase the water table because the bamboo root system is a fibrous root system, which remains only in the top and which have become a mat of root for uh, both 10 feet, both sides. And that is able to hold the water of 430 millimeter water. What is 430 millimeter water? It's almost, you know, 16, 17 lakh liters per acre, 1.6 million liter per acre. That's the kind of water it's able to hold it when there is a rain. And whereas the run, uh, in the eucalyptus area, the runoff takes place. I'm not this, uh, but eucalyptus also is a good crop, good plant, where there is a good amount of water is available and it's a good adaptability. Like this, there are other crops are there, like willows are there, Japanese odors are there. And bamboo also been tested by many people in US and Taiwan, and uh, where they are able to record up to 26.4 dry ton of bamboo per acre. Now, with the development of new clones, which I've been working for the 15 years, and we could push the bamboo yield, biomass yield, which includes all the stems and branches and the tops, and uh, without including the roots and rhizomes, it can go anywhere from 40 to 65 tons per acre. The potential is 100 tons. However, even if you get 40 tons, we need something like 2,000 acres of bamboo to make one ethanol factory to run to produce 60 kale per day. That's what we needed. So it is not a huge like sugarcane factory today running with 20,000 uh, 20, uh, acres of sugarcane is doing it. Whereas bamboo needs only 2,000 acres to produce 60,000, which is a, a smallest viable capacity. Uh, getting back to the feedstocks. What are the feedstock? What are the chemical character which makes bamboo special? Is it the quantity alone or something else? Now, you look at the dry density of the bamboo material, the bamboo has got 500 to 600 uh, kgs per meter cube, which is 0.5 to 0.7. Cane, sugar cane, because is 0.1 to 0.2. Wheat is 0.1 to 0.3, which is very light. So because of which you need to handling is very, very high. Wood is better, 0.2 to 0.5. Bamboo is going the highest among the lot. And, but you have to chip it. If, you're, if it is a tubular structure, it's going to occupy a lot of density. The packing density is going to be different. The bulk density is different. The packing density is different. So we, as soon as the bamboo is harvested, it will be chipped in the field and it will be packed. So the packing density comes to this. Then comes the yield. Bamboo yield could be per hectare. It's all put per hectare. It could be 20 ton. As low as 20 ton, it can go up to 100 tons. Sugarcane yield is 7 to 10 tons per hectare. Begas, I'm talking about, and uh, wheat straw, it's around 6 to 12 tons of wheat straw. Wood is going to be 10 to 20 tons per hectare. Now, what is the chemical composition which makes it different? One is the cellulose content, 40 to 70 percent. I've reached up to 70 percent. The scope is going to be more than even 80 percent. There are there are processes going to come, which I'll discuss later at the, at the end of my uh, speak talk. I'll show you, you know, it can go even up to 80, 90 percent. How? Coming back to this. Now, even at 70%, it's a 40 to 70% cellulose. This is 38% is the bagas, and wheat is 38% and the wood is 50%. Similarly, hemicellulose, which is most important for the immediate conversion is hemicellulose, 20 to 30%, 25%, 36%, 23%. Even here also, it is it's better, but then wheat straw is a little better, more better than that. Um, when it comes to lignin, 
which is undigested material, which is a, another good byproduct, and which also makes money to many people now. And that's going to be 20 to 40 percent, 40 percent, 60 percent, 22 percent. Now, other materials are there. We checked this one with Paraj in India. We have been checking with many people. I've been checking with, uh, uh, you know, Indian Chemical Institute in Bombay, and then with Praj. The Praj could also again check it and found out that they said 60% of the weight by weight is convertible sugar, and 200 to 250 ton could be um, a, uh, material is needed to make a pilot project, which they again said they'll be able to uh, convert 20% of the material into ethanol. Now, similarly, the biopass conversion is going through several stages. I've been talking to you in the beginning with the photographs. Now, I'm going to give you exact uh, details. One is the pre-treatment. The pre-treatment depends on the age of the bamboo. If you're going and harvesting a bamboo which is five years, six years old, the pre-treatment is going to be enormous. If you're going to harvest one year old, much better. If you're going to harvest three months old bamboo, no pre-treatment, -pre very, very less amount of pre-treatment is needed. So pre-treatment depends on the age of the bamboo, the species of the bamboo, and, and, and the characteristic. Then, then, then comes the, the second stage is hydrolysis of the process. Then we ferment the bamboo. After fermentation, the bamboo, then the recovery of the uh, uh, ethanol. So recovery of ethanol takes place. And by then we have to dehydrate it. Normally, when you do the distillation, you'll get only up to 95%, 95.6%. Then you have to dehydrate it because we cannot use it as a fuel with, with there's some amount of moisture is there. So I think if you're getting confused, I'll make it very simple to show you. Simplified ethanol bamboo biomass procedure. First, you have the bi bamboo biomass. Then you do the pretreatment with the heat or acid or enzyme. And once you treat it, they become the, the digestible material is become digestible. It is able to you know allow the enzymes to penetrate and do this. Then the cellulose is available now for treatment. This cellulose uh, is hydrolysis using the enzymes, cellulose enzyme, and cellulose enzyme is able to digest cellulose uh, and then convert them into sugar. Initially, you have starch. The starch is converted into cellulose, cellulose into sugar. Sugar, sugar now it's getting converted into uh, with the help of yeast or bacteria or genetically engineered bacteria, and they are able to convert the sugar into second generation ethanol. This is what the simple process is. So what has shown you in the bottom is the stages, and what I shown you is the process involved in this. Now this process we look at with pre-treatment is the first one. So it could be physical pre-treatment or a physical chemical treatment or just chemical pretreatment or biological treatment. There are four types of treatments available. You know, in the physical treatment, it could be chipping first, then the grinding, milling, you can microwave it, whereby you, you, can, you can heat it. Then the pyrolysis is also available, which I'm not going to deal with, which is going to be a C4 process and electro beam irradiation method. In the milling process, you are ball milling, colloidal milling, two-roll milling, hammer milling, Vibro energy milling, so many types of millings are available. Now, when it comes to the physical chemical, you use the simple liquid hot water method or ammonia fiber explosion method. Uh, the steam is much more simpler and easier, and which is uh, which you, you can get it as a byproduct and you can use it. So, uh, physical chemical, this is a better method, which is very often used. Then comes the chemical method. You can use acid, mild acid mild alkaline or a co-solvent, ionic liquids, wet oxidation, ozonization, O3 can be generated and that can also, you know, be able to do that. So like this, there are several uh, chemical methods available. Then comes the microbial ones. Microbial ones are not very popular, but I just want to tell you there are rotting funguses available, white rot, brown rot, and soft rot fungi, which can which can easily digest and do that. It's all cost effective, very, very cost effective. But then recovery is going to be affected. And the most common method, which is used is steam explosion. And uh, then comes the stages of uh, technologies are there. Some people, they do two, three stages together. Some people do the separate stages separately. Like, you know, in this first stage, it's called SFS stage, where separate hydrolysis and fermentation is done. 
hydrolysis separate and fermentation separate. So first, initially pretreatment is for everything is common. Then comes the enzyme production separately. Then enzyme is added for a hydrolysis and a separate place. Then it goes to the fermentation place. Then it goes for the hexose, hexose fermentation to pentose fermentation. And finally, the separation. Now, this is called separate hydrolysis and fermentation method. The second is simultaneously you do both hydrolysis and fermentation together, SSF method. You do the same pretreatment, enzyme production separately, and you do the um, uh, hexose separate, pentose separate. Then comes the next methodology is you do saccharification simultaneously to the co-fermentation. You do hexose fermentation as well as pentose fermentation together along with the hydrolysis. Now, this is quite common, very famous, very popular. Many people are doing it. And then comes the consolidated bioprocessing, which is what is going to ultimately, we are all looking for it, where the cost of investment will come down easily. So where enzyme production is done in the same place, enzymatic hydrolysis is done, excess fermentation is done, pentose fermentation is done. All will be done. It's called CBP or consolidated bioprocessing. And a couple of friends of mine are working on this kind of a technology to bring down the capital cost. One of the main drawbacks of this is, is the capital cost. And that cost is likely to come down. Once that comes, people can make smaller capacity. Now, the same thing I'm just showing in, in the form of sugar, C5, C6 sugar separately in the SSF form. Then in a cellulosic hydrolysis done, fermentation is done separately in a SSF method. In simultaneous one, all are done together then this is the series method. The bamboo biomass is able to get converted to this one. What are the inputs? I said the process. What are the inputs needed? I've just taken, uh, you know, every every process got its own method. I've just taken one particular method. In milling, milling is done uh, initially to physically to do this. And uh, during the pre-hydrolysis process, uh, some amount of lime and gypsum are added to, uh, to see that the material is digested and the pH also is brought down to the favorable level. Then the enzyme cellulose is added along with the yeast for the simultaneous saccharification and at different stages, the lignin is separated. The, then the material goes for distillation, scrubbing takes place. Uh, in the distillation, the ethanol after taking out, scrubbing takes place to remove the carbon dioxide and the, the lignin what is coming out goes to a co-generation uh, steam production where it is burned and burned and the boiler is able to produce steam. The steam is used again and for the, the pre-treatment with the mild acid is used again. So this is the process by which it's done. And this is done by many people today. Many, many companies are doing it. Uh, in India, <clears throat> I'm very happy to say that we are the, uh, one of the largest uh, 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 ethanol-based company coming up in India, uh, ABRBL. Um, this is a Numaligar, sister concern of Numaligar, Assam Biorefineries Limited, which is able to do the first project they started way back in 2014. <clears throat> the construction is going on because they have ample quantity of bamboo available. So they could do this first and then they are able to do that. At that time, we never had the technology in India. So our president at that time, along with the minister, has to go to Finland and Bharat Petroleum was uh, signed an agreement with a Finnish company um, then they brought the technology from there to produce 60 kale per day capacity. But today, due to constraints and due to uh, uh, many factors, they uh, increase the capacity from 60 kale to over uh, 150 kale. Now it was signed and it is started. The project is started. Let's look at what are the what, what is the mass balance? How much amount of mass is going? how much amount of mass is getting reduced and what kind of inputs are there, what kind of outputs are there in this. Now, 44 tons per hour it is added. This is one typical project I'm showing you where bamboo feedstock is added at 44 tons per hour. Initially cooking is done. After the cooking, the, the, the pulp is getting formed. And uh, since we are adding a good quantity of the biosolvent and then other material, the 44 tons becomes 194 tons. And then it goes through a hydrolysis. During the hydrolysis, there are quite a lot of other inputs are provided inside that results in, um, in, a, in an increase in mass. Finally, for a hydrolysate, it's only 75 tons per hour it is going into the fermentation column. In the fermentation, the, bam the bamboo, uh, the, the pulp is getting fermented 
and the fermented pulp what is coming out through the fermentation is 69 tons and which is getting purified into um yeah before that the excess water which is coming here is getting evaporated and drying takes place <clears throat> then the, the, the distillation also done for that <clears throat> the ethanol which is purified it's able to make 6.2 liter ethanol from the 44 tons of bamboo what is added every hour it is done, doing so this results in a lesser quantity but that depends on every technology has got 15 percent 20 percent 20 percent and uh, depending on the wet weight or dry weight now the whatever comes out from the silage which is uh, which is 50 watt ton per hour it's coming out from the silage which has got a lot of water which is removed and after that the dried one is going uh, around nine tons of material goes to the power plant to produce electricity which produces 20 megawatt of electricity and 130 ton per hour uh, of uh, steam and that steam is used for cooking purpose so this is the entire cycle for the mass balance uh, for you to understand and uh, Another another uh, Chinese company was developed uh, another better technology where they were using something like 10 kg bamboo dry weight with all these enzymes, um, sorry, with all these content in the bamboo, which is able to convert into a solid mass of 8.867 kg after the acid pretreatment, alkaline pretreatment. Then they go through the steam pretreatment, then it comes to 6.99 kg. Then after the hydrosylate, it becomes uh, 2.5 kg of ethanol or almost 3 liter of ethanol. So 10 kg gives you 3 liter ethanol in this process. So there are different methods available. So there's another technology called process technology, which I told you, which does not use much of chemicals. Optimization, optimizing this C5 and C6 sugar extraction, minimum for production, uh, uh, the inhibitors are formed during the process. That is minimized because of the process technology. And this is a continuous early uh, uh, using this by, uh, feedstock and it can work for large scale operation. The one of the major problem is the capex and opex. And in India, the opex can be around 25 to 30 rupees per liter of ethanol. And uh, so, but then the capex is very high. I'll come to the later. Now such process have come up in several parts of the world. What I'm showing you is the world in different, different areas. And the one which is uh, good ones are all the red color ones, which is uh, uh, the black ones are all fail because this technology is a nascent technology, which is not really, not fully perfected, but it's, it's getting perfected now. And uh, in order to see that we all go into this kind of a technology, government is giving a uh, lot of help Indian government, I'm talking about Indian government, we are able to do that. They are able to buy ethanol. Earlier, it was only 25 rupees, 26 rupees ethanol, one liter. Now, for heavy molasses, they made 45 rupees. And for, uh, sorry, uh, B grade heavy molasses is for 57. Sugar cane juice, if you're going to convert completely into that, it is 62 rupees, 65 paise. Biomass ethanol, bi ethanol from biomass, the rate is not at fixed completely now. Um, so it's going to be definitely more than the juice uh, sugar cane juice even at 60 rupees is highly economically viable only that capital investment the government has to really look into that and then we have to come out of some new technologies to do this now in order to help this government also banned import of ethanol uh, for uh, for uh, to blend it in petrol and also reduced 18 percent gst to five percent gst and Earlier, the ethanol was not allowed to move from one place to another place. You have to be protected. There are so many rules and regulations are there. Now, that's also been taken out from this. Now, this is a typical plant of a 2G ethanol plant, a small one capacity. And uh, this is courtesy to Praj, Pune. And this is the material handling system of theirs and where the material is uh, pulverized and pulverized material is getting loaded and uh, this is the pre-treatment on solid liquid separation area. And then this is the hydrolysis and the co-fermentation together is done. And after this, this is the uh, distillation place where the columns are there for distillation. And uh, 
this is the wastewater treatment facility because a lot of water comes out. If you've seen me in the earlier slides where I've shown the process, a lot of water comes out. Every water has to be treated and recycled again into the process. Otherwise, it's going to be a polluting industry. So for that, this is very essential. This is the total view of the industry. That's how the industry is going to look like. Now, I just want to show you one new industry going to come up in Karnataka. <clears throat> they have they are going to do something like 60 KLD per uh, uh, per day, uh, 60 kiloliter per day ethanol in Davangere. They have, they, have, they, have, uh, they come out of the place and then they are going to their place also allocated and they are, they are starting now. Now the project costs 120 million US dollar, which is going to be around 840 crore rupees. This is what I said. The initial investment is going to be very huge. So government needs to really look at for the investment uh, uh, who will be able to help this out. And this is the breakup cost of those things and, uh, you know, for different, different operations, how this uh, one, uh, $119 million arrived. And to meet this huge requirement, bamboo, one side bamboo is needed. The challenge is how do we make the bamboo available in large quantity? And for that, I've been telling energy plantation is a must. And we should really do bamboo, grow bamboo like a sugar cane, not like our regular tree. It should be grown closer, like our tea bushes or a mulberry bushes for sericulture or a curry leaf, how we grow curry leaf in the farm for producing a leaf. Uh, you know, then it's, that's the way it should be done so that the younger bamboo could be used. So to get this 40 ton, you should have best bamboo species, best clone, best tissue culture, a good agronomy and closer plantation and the drip irrigation and fertigation. You can also use sewage water to grow bamboo, which will be able to give quick and good biomass. There are different, different species are there. When you want to use it, the content of the quantity of yield is different among the species as well as the cellulose content, the lignin content also varies. So normally the thorny bamboos are there, the good clones need to be selected. And uh, after taking the good clone, you should also look for the best propagation method I've been working with tissue culture for 40 years, which I'm fully convinced that tissue culture can give you the best material to produce and to give a uniform growth to the bamboo plants. And earlier people thought that tissue culture plant cannot grow in the field. It will have a lot of problems. It will have, uh, you know, the rhizome plants are better and all that. Yes, rhizome plants are better if you're going to plant few plants. If you want to do a large quantity of plants, the tissue culture is the only method which will be able to help you into doing that. Then planting the bamboo, Closer is very important for the early harvest and a repeated quick harvest. The quicker the harvest, if you harvest bamboo in every three months and six months, which is something look different for you, but it is the one which is going to be used like how tea bush is harvested every 21 days. And the young leaves of tea is more important. Similarly, bamboo also, the younger the bamboo, the lesser the pre-treatment, lesser the cost, lesser the investment, and that's going to make the, in the, in the bamboo bioethanol industry more viable and all that. So 1,000 plants can be planted, or it can go even higher than that. Up to 2,500 plants can be gone if, if the harvest is going to be quicker. Now, I'm just showing you one such people who tried this with uh, effluent water from a distillery. Uh, uh, around 10, 12 years back and uh, it is uh, energy plantation of the bamboo, Bima bamboo plant and where within one year they could get this kind of a height growth and the first year growth itself, it's a small tissue culture plant planted and they were able to grow to this height in 12 months time for which the plants are planted not in pits, a continuous row of uh, 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 trenches are made filled with manure and the manure is, again, the soil is covered in the top. And every four feet, the plants are planted. And uh, it was kept like this and it's planted like this. And this is the height of the plant at the time of planting. But that's the same plant which grown to that height. Now, when you want to irrigate the bamboo for such purpose, you need to irrigate the total quantity of water of 2,000 millimeters requirement for the bamboo, which will be able to assure you 40 dry ton of bamboo, 40 dry ton of bamboo, wet ton will be 60 tons. And that, this is going to convert into ethanol. So 2,000 acres of such bamboo will be able to give you the kind of um, uh, for kind of mass needed for one factory to run independently without depending on any other raw material from outside. Now, this is the uh, drip irrigation and fatigation method where fatigation fertilizers are provided to the plant on a weekly basis. And the plant looks like this in a two months time. When you look at them, in the, uh, you know, there's a 12 feet gap between the rows. And in four months time, they'll get filled up 
and in eight months time it is good enough now this is a stage good for ethanol making but if you start harvesting the rhizomes are not there they will not again grow so you have to wait for some more time wait for 12 months the bamboo is grown fully then wait for another one two years time initially after that you can harvest very very regularly this is a fully grown plant it could be manually harvested like this or it could be mechanically harvested like this completely mechanically harvested in ethanol you don't need to really look for a stronger bamboo with a lot of lignin you need a younger bamboo not the shoot shoots will produce very less amount of biomass so you need to allow them to grow then you start harvesting they'll come back they'll come back in two weeks time they'll come back in uh, four weeks time to this height and they'll come back to this in another uh, six weeks time so when this is there this is also good enough six week but allow them to grow for two to three months time then by the time the the, the rhizome below also get equipped with additional nutrition to store then you start harvesting them if you don't or you leave them for two years like this and then it can be harvested given to this but the pre treatment has to be more for such matured bamboo but then what happens today bamboo is growing like this in the forest which is 0.5 tons per acre per year for the indian national average yield is less than 1 ton when it comes to the farmers they are able to make 4 to 8 tons on a normal scale there are exception farmers are there like hegde ji is there i could see you know they're all they they all take care much more better but if you are really doing something like this <clears throat> with the, with the drip irrigation fertigation with the precision farming bamboo can give you 40 dry ton not wet ton 60 wet tons and just before i close i'll just compare few other technology sugarcane is one which is got direct method where a starch is going through a sugar and getting converted and bamboo goes through a starch and sugar now this is not important what is important is what is the quantity of ethanol available per acre this is only 500 liter per acre from sugar if you are using molasses if you are converting the entire sugar juice it be 2000 liter maize 3000 liter per acre per year bamboo 10000 liter per acre per year i know many people may not understand or may not even you know you will not agree with me now i'm sure about it i'm sure about it and please believe me whether you do it or i do it if i don't do it somebody else is come and do it and they're going to do this let's start doing it now this is the yield available the ethanol yield this is a mind boggling jump from what is available from 500 liter or 2000 liter in the sugar cane to 10000 liter five time jump with the present day technology now i've been talking to many people including the honorable minister nitin gadkari ji he is very much encouraging this and he is looking forward to do that he himself is doing it he knows the his own personal factories and all that thank you very much for listening to me for such a long time i think i've done my time 45 minutes i've taken and uh, uh i've shared you all this information because i've been i'm working now for uh, inbar as a consultant to prepare a project for african country to make ethanol and uh, we, are, uh, we are you know i've been also interacting with another person here in south india who is likely to produce not big huge industry a smaller one is more likely to make i i hope he will be he will be through with all these new technology so every farmer can produce it 10 15 acres farmer can jointly produce ethanol that is what the ultimate dream of him and we are going to work with them and then it's uh, it's halfway through we have got this uh, some of the results and if it happens this is going to be the future green revolution for bamboo to bring the fuel back to the indian not in only india throughout the world there are people talking to me from dubai the king family they are looking at producing ethanol in africa and taking it to uh, dubai though they have the oil everything so this is the future if we catch it up very well and good otherwise somebody else is going to do it thank you very much for listening to me thank you again thank you uh, um, uh, bsi for giving me such a wonderful opportunity to talk to all of you and uh, a very specific topic on ethanol thank you very much thank you dr bharti that was a wonderful presentation you really took us through the different stages of producing ethanol with much ease and simplicity so we all could understand very easily uh, with this uh, i would like to open the floor for a couple of questions we already passed uh, yeah we are at 11:30 dot i can probably we can take two questions two important questions if anyone would like to 
please raise your hand if you have any questions ladies and gentlemen uh, can i can i ask question uh, i am uh, dr pramod kant here please please sir please go ahead uh, uh, thank you very much uh, it was an excellent uh, lecture and gives a lot of hope for the for uh, the ethnol production in india because when this uh, process started several years back about 20 odd years back of mixing with nol with with petrol uh, i was also one of those people who had very little hope from from this because of the you know the alternate uses of the sugar and uh, the cell the use the raw metal that was available at that time but this and certainly the 10000 liters per acre per year which means 25000 liters per hectare per year because in in hectare i'm converting it to hectare because it is easier for me to understand that 25000 liters per hectare per year this is mind boggling and uh, even if we are able to achieve let's say normally in field conditions one is able to achieve 75% of the you know the, the top most uh, uh, achievement under laboratory kind of conditions so if it comes to 20000 liters per hectare per year of uh, from bamboo this is something which which we ought to look at and jump into it immediately and uh, uh, just one small question that i want to ask uh, as, as somebody who has handled bamboo in uh, in or great extent in uh, tamil nadu i belong to tamil nadu cadre retired member of the indian forest service from tamil nadu and uh, uh, i have handled bamboo in several places in the state this kind of uh, we used to harvest you know the we would not harvest the entire clump but i saw here that the entire clump has been harvested not uh, leaving a few uh, you know like we used to do that in the horseshoe kind of a manner but this silviculture is some, harvesting silviculture is somewhat different uh, i am sure there must be some reason behind that uh because uh, we used to give this uh, the horseshoe thing to give shape to give strength to the to the bamboo clump to harvest so that we can harvest again and again could you kindly explain whether this is uh, something which has been looked into and whether this or whether this is just because of ease of harvesting that this is has been suggested here kindly doc sir sir there are three factors which is uh, pushing us to do this kind of a clear cut harvesting right and before going to the clay cut harvesting this is uh, i've been practicing it for last only around 8 uh, to 9 years on this subject of right. clay cut harvesting when mr bressel they are doing it for last 18 years clay cut harvesting every 3 years right. not few area it's more than 2 and 1/2 lakh acres they have been harvesting it it was a mind boggling information for me at that time it was opening you know i said when it is working in somewhere else why not in india then yeah. we came back but then here we have been still following british system of harvesting as you rightly said leave the older one and harvest a smaller one in a cultivated bamboo sir it what happens you get good amount of rhizomes mm -hmm. and they are more than 30% when you uproot we have seen it 30% is available and okay. because of which in a in a dry in a in a in a forest condition with the less nutrition the rhizome development reduces after some time in the beginning they are there because a lot of potash is available the bamboo takes something like 480 kg of potash which many people don't agree to that they they yeah. they're not estimated yeah. and they all write to me saying that you have made a mistake in the numbers it's yeah. 480 kg of potash has been sucked by the bamboo to form the rhizome if it is okay. not available initially available but what happens the rhizome is not developing now when the rhizomes are there any amount of shaving the head like a bamboo and it comes back because okay. it is able to hold it number 2 as you rightly said how is of harvesting today if a bamboo is produced at 4000 rupees a ton harvesting costs itself around 2000 rupees That's for the right. manual harvest now if you do this kind of a harvest it's hardly 300 rupees per ton yeah number 3 the bamboo depending on the industry one has to look at it if uh, mr hegde is there if you want to sell the bamboo only for furniture making and for uh, for a structure it need to be selected three years old bamboo go one by one harvested 
for ethanol, you don't need the three-year world. But today, people are working with the three-year world. But that's a different story. But I've done all the testing right from four months, three months, 10 months, 20 months, 30 months, 40 months, two years, five years. And we checked up, we found out highest ethanol production is the lowest level. People do not know. Even the industry does not know. Right. Even the biggest industry is coming up in India. I don't want to name it. They do not know. However, now, in a, in a, when you harvest together, you're getting all these like a sugar cane. And we need only the less, more the cellulose and less amount of lignin. And when since the plant is able to come back, the cost of material is very, very highly important. Now, 4,000 rupees is the price which could be paid by industry for one ton of bamboo. Yeah. Now, then only they, their raw material cost is 16,000 rupees for the raw material cost. Yeah. Uh, uh, or 16 rupees. Let me put it one kilo. 16 rupees per kilogram. The processing cost is another 12 rupees. So 16 plus 12 makes it 28. Between anywhere 25 to 30 rupees is the cost of production of one liter of ethanol sold in the market. It's 58 rupees minimum. Okay. Yes. Now, if you start putting the 2,000 2, rupees harvesting cost along with it, then that's going to be additional cost, which will make it unviable because it has to cover its huge capital cost invested to repay the loan, to cover the depreci depreciation and interest. You need to have larger margin for that. Right. Now, that's the reason we went for, we, we have been suggesting work, clear cut harvest, plant it closer because when you're going to clear cut harvest, the bamboo will produce less biomass. Now, yeah. when you put more number of bamboo plant, then your mass, even if it is coming around 40 kilogram per plant, you'll get 40 tons with a thousand plants. Okay. Like a tea bush. I have not spoken today on this, sir. Actually, every time I've been speaking on the high density plantation, all that, today I spoke only on this. So, harvesting is taken care with the help. And this is repeated now. We are now doing bamboo for fodder, which is much more uh, quicker harvest than ethanol. In right. a fodder, the bamboo should be less than two months old. Yeah. We are working for another project in Philippines to convert bamboo leaf into a fodder. Okay. Which is never thought by our people. Like right. a tea bush. Tea is known as a tree. Now tea is growing as a bush because we want tea leaf, not tea stem. In a forestry, you are from IFS officer. You are, uh, so we were, we were looking for wood. Now we are no more we are looking for wood. We are looking for leaf. So every part of the bamboo has got a lot of use. Knowingly, unknowingly, I've been working for 15 years for different segment of industry, including fiber, uh, you know, for, for cattle feed. For Japan, they want this cattle feed. Right. So, they want to grow 20,000 acres of bamboo only for fodder. Now, the system, cultivation, everything is different. Similarly, here. I'm also able to see Mr. Uh, Mr. Bose is there. Mr. Vita, he is from Vitara and he has been working with us for this similar kind of project from Australia. Okay. We have been looking at the bamboo to produce syngas. Then they went on to go for ethanol. Now they are also working in CNG gas from Bamboo. Right. They are not, not talking smaller one. They are huge area. So yeah. Mr. Bose, maybe you can also uh, throw a little light on this because rarely I see in, in the Bamboo Forum. Yeah. And they are the industry people. Mm. They are talking about 25,000 acres of bamboo to be cultivated. In Maharashtra, yeah, they have put up a factory now. They are, they are just sorry. They are, they have bought, got the land. They have signed agreement with uh, Maharashtra Bamboo Development Board, and they are the you know pioneer. But they have been working on this subject at least I know 13 to 14 years. Am I right, Mr. Bose? Yeah, we have started working from in 2010, but uh, due to various uh, conditions in India, we could not establish any project. Finally, Maharashtra government has given support to develop the project near Nagpur in uh, Amrava, this Chandrapur district and uh, Yavatmal district, where a lot, lot of bamboo is available with the forest department and even farmers also ready to grow with the help of the Maharashtra Bamboo Development Board. So Maharashtra Development Board has planned for 30 lakh acres of the bamboo to come up and uh, to help the farmers. So we have signed with the Maharashtra Bamboo Development Board for uh, 10 lakh tons per year. And uh, Forest Development Corporation of Maharashtra, another 10 lakh tons per year. Okay. So that is they are going to give. But see, we wanted to have the buyback arrangement with the, any oil company in India. Nobody has come forward to purchase 2G ethanol. They say, so, well, yeah, as of now, we got permission only to purchase only 1G ethanol, not the 2G ethanol. Mm -hmm. So then uh, they said that they will purchase CBG, compressor biogas. 
Then we have decided to go for the compressed biogas. Now we are going to uh, develop the project for 320 tons of compressed biogas per day. Right. So that is around, uh, say, 4,000 tons of uh, bamboo we are going to consume per day okay. and uh, produce this uh, 320 tons of uh, uh, compressed biogas as in the first phase. Right. At the time, I hope the government will come forward to purchase the 2G ethanol or green diesel or green hydrogen or uh, such thing. We can produce everything. But at, at present, government is giving support only for the CPG or biodiesel, which is produced from the cooked, uh, cooking oil that is used cooking oil. Yeah. So that's the government has to uh, form the policy to purchase 2G ethanol or uh, this uh, green hydrogen, green diesel, or all these things. No, but so far, we are waiting for that. But we are going in the first phase as the CBG. Mm -hmm. It is the, by 2023 June, we are going to commission the plant to produce the CBG. Okay. That is the, our system. You know, but the thing is that a lot of things has to change in India to attract the investment from the foreign countries. You know, I need not tell openly what are the problems we are facing here. So we, we can understand 10 years we struggled to get the license in India. Yeah. Though we have capacity to invest 100% FDI. So, but Maharashtra government has given support at their last. So, Sir, how much uh, uh, syn gas you're producing per kg? No, we are not producing syn gas. We are producing methane gas. We are going with the anaerobic digester system. Anaerobic system. Okay, okay. But that uh, we, have, we, have got, we have got Aquacing. already <laughs> biomass gasifier also. That also we are going to start later in the second phase. Yes, Dr. Bharati, yes. please, you'll yes. have to tell me. Yes, Harpal Singh. Like, you know, I, I've been also working with the, this thing and then... Uh, um, one kg of dry bamboo can produce 1.2 to 1.3 cubic meter of gas with an uh, energy value of uh, 1,100 to 1,300 kilocalories per cubic meter. Cubic meter, okay. This is a test we conducted with, uh, um, with um, uh, in Baroda. Yeah. Um, yeah, Jane, what is his name? Is uh, Ankur. Ankur Scientific. Yeah, yeah. I just bamboo, is, bamboo is tested. So we yeah. nearly tested around 10 tons of biomass with them. And uh, before sending, uh, you know, the gasifier to South Africa. Yeah. But uh, if, if we liquefy that gas, so yes. uh, what would be the result? Yes. Actually, you know, when you directly liquefy it, if you liquefy the bamboo syn gas into liquid, it will become only wood oil, which will be equivalent to our HSD. But then, if you can hydrogenate at the time of gasification, and then with the hydrogen background, if you're able to do with a few more catalytic agent, it will become directly petrol or diesel or aeronautic fuel. This particular technology has been done, perfected by Shell in Bangalore. They have called, called this is IH2 technology, where four kilo bamboo will be able to give you one liter petrol or one liter diesel or one liter um, one liter uh, aeronautic fuel or even mm -hmm. kerosene. So actually, I'm, we also partnered with them. I'm not able to disclose because we have our NDA we signed with it's them. Okay. Also we tested the bamboo. I understand. Uh, you see, uh, uh, syngas, is it uh, more uh, efficient or... Uh... Uh, this um, uh, fermentation process is more efficient. Fermentation process is more efficient. The reason is when you do the uh, Ranganaji, are, are, are we taking too much time into this subject? Or? <laughs> sir, we, this will be the last one, sir. Last question. Okay, sir. Okay. Can I ask? Uh, sir, is, let let me finish. Complete the answer for Harpal Singh. Right. Sir, right. Actually, right. when you do the 4,000 kg of bamboo, you're converting into uh, you know, uh, only 1,000 uh, kilocalories of uh, uh, energy when you do the syngas and then electricity production. But then, if you're able to convert them into ethanol, 50% is available as a biomass, and then the efficiency of energy conversion is better through fermentation because there is no heat loss, which is dissipated, which is not collected otherwise. So I would always say fermentation route, like why, what YC Bose said now, 
converting into bio CNG is better option than a syngas. Both are going to give you the gas, but then the efficiency is going to be higher through fermentation process. My, my last question: What's the uh, what's the amount of nitrogen and carbon dioxide uh, present in a syngas that you make out of bamboo? Sir, I don't remember immediately. I'll pass it on to you, sir. Immediately. Thank you. We'll, we'll talk separately. Yeah.